what are bell numbers and what's our occurrence relation we could use to calculate them? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. We'll talk a bit about partitions of sets, we'll introduce bell numbers, and see a recurrence relation we can use to calculate them and where that recurrence relation comes from. We're not going to go through a full proof of the recurrence relation in this lesson, but the ideas we go over will very closely mimic what we'll use in our proof of the recurrence relation, which we'll do in the next lesson on bell numbers. I'll leave a link in the description to my previous lesson introducing partitions and bell numbers assuming that I was able to upload it because for some reason so far YouTube has just not let me upload the lesson but I assume I will be able to upload it and I'll leave the link to it in the description uh, where we calculate some bell numbers. Now let's just quickly do some intro stuff so a bell number counts the number of partitions of a set with a certain number of objects. So for example, the bell number B3, what is it? Well, it's the number of ways we could partition a set that contains three objects. There'll be links in the description to a lesson where I introduced partitions, but we'll quickly go over it here. You can think of a partition of a set of objects as being a sorting of the objects into disjoint subsets. So for example, what are some of the partitions of this set? Or in fact, all of them. We'll just list all of them. Well, we could put one in its own part, two in its own part, and three in its own part. Another thing we could do is put one and two together in a part, and we could put three in its own part. Speaking more formally about partitions, again, what we're doing is sorting the objects into subsets. So what this partition would be is the subset that just contains one, the subset that just contains two, the subset that just contains three, and then the actual partition is the set containing these subsets. Similarly, this partition is the set containing the subset that contains one and two, and the subset that contains Three. That's what this partition is. But of course, that notation is a little bit annoying. Another partition we could have is putting one and three together and two all on its own. Or we could put two and three together and one all on its own. Or we could put one, two, and three all together. These are the one, two, three, four, five partitions of a set with three objects. Of course, the actual objects in the set don't affect the number of ways we can partition them, it's just the cardinality of the set that affects the number of ways we can partition it. So we th see that the bell number B3, this is a bell number B3, the number of ways we can partition a set of three objects is equal to five. The important ideas of a partition is that we're sorting the elements of a set into disjoint subsets. So none of the parts that we sort the objects into, none of the parts have an element in common, and if we union all of the parts together, we get the original set. So that's what partitions are, and that's what bell numbers are. As you can imagine, bell numbers very quickly become difficult to calculate by hand, and there's no nice closed formula for calculating bell numbers but there is a really nice recurrence relation. So quickly, let's, uh, let's just write out the first few bell numbers. We say that the number of ways to partition the empty set is one. The number of ways to partition a set with one element is also one which you could verify. The number of ways to partition a set with two elements is two. And we just saw that the number of ways to partition a set with three elements B3 is equal to 5. So how could we calculate the fourth bell number, B4, using these previous bell numbers? Well, here's the recurrence relation. We're going to use it, and then we're going to explain it. So to calculate uh, the next bell number, B4, here's what we have to do. All we got to do is take the sum from k equals 0 to k equals 3, which is 1 less than 4, of 3 choose k multiplied by the bell number bk. So what's this equal to? This is 3 choose 0 for k equals 0. It's 3 choose 0 times b0, the bell number b0, 
plus incrementing k up to 1, plus 3 choose 1 times the bell number b1, plus 3 choose 2 times the bell number b2, plus 3 choose 3 times the bell number b3. Beautiful. And what is this equal to? 3 choose 0 is 1, b0 is 1, so that's 1 times 1, which is 1, plus 3 choose 1, which is 3, times b1, which is 1, that's 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 3 2, which is 3, times b2, which is 2, that's 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 3 times 3, which is 1, times b3, which is 5, that's 1 times 5, uh, which is 5. This is 1 plus 3, which is 4, plus 6, which is 10, plus 5, which is 10 plus 5, that's 15. So the bell number B4 is 15. That's the recurrence relation for the bell numbers. That's how we apply it. Really, it's fairly straightforward, a really cool uh, sum for finding your next bell number, in my humble opinion. So where the heck does this come from? How could we figure it out ourselves? That's what I'm going to try to explain to you in the next part of the lesson. So we applied the recurrence relation. We see that the number of ways to partition a set of four objects is 15. Now let's see if we can reason through how we might have arrived at this recurrence relation on our own. Suppose we wanted to try to find a recurrence relation as we go to find the bell number for a set of five objects. So we're wondering how many ways could we partition a set that has five objects? We're afraid we might get it wrong if we do it by hand, so can we reason through uh, a way to figure this out with the previous bell numbers, a recurrence relation that lets us use our previous bell numbers. I think this is a really clever argument, and what we're going to go through is the exact same reasoning that we're going to use in the proof that's coming up in the next lesson. So here's the idea. If we want to use the previous bell numbers, we certainly want to find a way to be considering a set that has fewer than five elements, because we know about bell numbers for sets with fewer than five elements. So here's the idea. If we have a partition of this set, certainly 5, the fifth object, which we're just going to call 5, that's in one of the parts of the partition. Let's call that part of the partition A1. So 5 is in the part A1. Now, of course, that part A1 has some cardinality. We'll call that cardinality K plus 1. It has 5 and k other elements. k could be equal to 0, or k could be as big as 4, so the part would contain all of the elements. For a given value of k, how many ways could 5 be in a part that has k plus 1 elements? Well, we have a total of k elements besides 5 to choose to put in the part that contains 5, and how many elements do we have to choose from? Well, we have a total of 5 elements. We've already included 5 in the part, so there are 4 elements left that we could choose from. Again, what we're, what we're counting here, 4 choose k, this is the total number of ways that 5 could be in a part that has cardinality k plus 1. So it has 5 and it has k other objects in it as well. So now if these k plus 1 objects are in the part A1, that doesn't completely describe a particular partition because we still have all of the other elements that aren't in A1 that need to be partitioned. So how many ways could we partition those other elements? Well, the number of ways to partition some number of elements is a bell number. How many elements need to be partitioned? Well, k plus 1 of them are in the set A1, so if we have a total of 5 objects, there are 5 minus the k plus 1 that we've already accounted for, 5 minus k plus 1 objects to be partitioned. And 5 minus k plus 1 is the same as 5 minus k minus 1, which is 4 minus k. So now you might be able to see we're starting to get somewhere. So for a given value of k, this is the total number of partitions. The total number of partitions with 5 in a part that has a cardinality of k plus 1. 
All right, now let's go over the reasoning behind this expression one more time. Again, this is the number of partitions that have five in a part that has a cardinality of k plus one. So the logic is, if five is in a part that has a cardinality of k plus one, there are four choose k total possibilities for what that part is, because we're guaranteeing that five is in it, but then among the other four elements in are set, we have to pick an additional k of them. So there are four choose k total possibilities for what that part could be. Then we have four minus k elements left to be partitioned. So for every four choose k ways we could have a part that includes five of this cardinality, there are b uh, four minus k, so the bell number four minus k, there are that many ways to partition the remaining elements. Now, of course, this just counts the total number of partitions for a particular value of k, but there are several different possible values for k. k could be as small as zero, meaning that five is in its own part, or k could be as big as four, meaning that five is in the same part as every other element. So all we have to do to count the total number of partitions of five objects, the bell number b5, all we have to do is add up this expression over all possible values of k, over all possible cardinalities for the part that contains five. So we add up this expression from k equals zero, that's where five is in a part by itself, up to k equals four, which is where five is in one part with all of the other elements. And there it is, that's our recurrence relation for B5. Now there's a little bit of work that we can do with this to make it look a little nicer. By the symmetric property of binomial coefficients, I'll leave a link in the description to a proof of that property, four choose k is the same as four choose four minus k. The idea behind that is four choose four minus k is the same as picking k objects to not pick, which is of course the same as four choose k. And so now we've got this recurrence relation, which in some way looks a little nicer. You got a four minus K here and a four minus K there. But what do these values look like? What do the terms of this sum look like? Well, we start at K equals zero. For K equals zero, we have four choose four times B four. Then we increment K up by one. Then we have four choose three times b3, that's when k is equal to one. And then we continue in this way, increment k up to a value of two. Then we have four choose two times b2 and so on, we'll skip a term. We end at four choose zero times b0. The point is this sum is just this other sum written backwards. It's just the sum from k equals zero to k equals four of four choose k multiplied by bk. And that looks nicer, so that's how we like to write the recurrence relation. So one more time, all we just did was we noticed that this sum is the same as this sum written backwards. So since it's just the addition of a finite number of terms, there's no problem in just rewriting this in the opposite order as this sum. Now to finish the lesson, let's just calculate what this sum is. Let's actually use the recurrence relation to solve for B5. We don't have to write out all the terms of this sum like this again, because these are the terms of the sum just in the opposite order. So let's start from the, you know, the far side. First, we have four choose zero, which is one times B zero, which is one. That's one times one, which is one. The term I skipped here is four choose one, which is four times B one, which is one. So that's four times one, which is four. Then we have four choose two, which is six times B two, which is two. That's six times two, which is 12. Then we have four choose three, which is four times B three, which is five. That's four times five, which is 20. Then we have four choose four, which is one times B four, which is 15. That's one times 15, which is 15. What have we got? What is B five, the number of ways to partition a set of five objects? It's one plus four, which is five, plus 12, which is 17, plus 20, which is 37, plus 15, which is 52. That is the bell number. B5, and that's how we could reason through a way to calculate it 
using a beautiful little recurrence relation. So I think this is some pretty cool stuff. I hope that explanation was fairly clear. If not, um, you know, think through it yourself, uh, watch the explanation again, and check out the proof when that comes out. Again, I'll leave a link in the description. So I hope this video helped you understand a bit about bell numbers and their recurrence relation. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If you'd like to help support Wrath of Math, I'd really appreciate a small donation on PayPal or a small monthly pledge on Patreon. I'll leave links to those down in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons yeah. on the internet raising the tobagos we growing like fresh tomatoes them boys on fire to fuego we pass it brown hot potato everything is new wavo i'm with my sweetie like quavo need my cheese need that queso need my bread need that bankroll wake up yes lord i'm thankful another day on my schedule steady blocking the devil i tell a hater god bless you Cherish more.